Welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that I just met. But I am a lifelong fan, <laughs> friend of this person. She's absolutely incredible. Actually, has written a book, and we're going to uh, talk about that in just a few moments. But y'all give it up for none other than Cindy Cohn. <laughs> a round of applause. I like that. <laughs> The first hey. guest you've ever had that lost her. <laughs> hey, you got you got to applaud yourself. You got to right. inspire yourself. I like that. Right, brings more joy. Right, you just added more joy to my day. <laughs> just in that brief moment, Cindy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. All right, thank you so much for having me on the show. It has been a pleasure already. Um, in the <laughs> brief minutes we've spoken. Um, my name is Cindy Cohn and I'm known to a lot of people as the queen of joy. Ta -da. Um, I didn't come up with that name myself. Actually, people just started calling me it on LinkedIn and I was like, oh, okay, well, that's who I am and it's stuck and I love it. Um, but I think, you know what? Every woman out there, I think are queens. Um, one of my things I love to do is empower and encourage and uplift and support all women. I love all women. Um, not that I don't love men too, but I have a thing for women. Um, and I just really um, enjoy being um, a partner with other women as far as empowering them to think of themselves as a queen also. So to me, everybody is a queen. Um, oh, my, <laughs> my background is in education. I have a master's degree in counseling, uh, spent many years in the virtual education arena, was part of the first online high school that ever existed in 2004. So when people were like in the pandemic, they were like, oh my God, we're going online. I was like, yeah, I've been here for you know 18 years. <laughs> so I'm a veteran. Um, after, through the pandemic, then I got into um, doing things online more for companies, started doing mm -hmm. team building. Um, and through that, um, and, and, you know, it was kind of a life change circumstance I went through, which made me write the book, um, which we'll probably get into that in a minute. Um, so things just went that direction into more joy. And here I am today. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so neat. And I love how you You've found your purpose along the way, and when you've you've done that, you've really embraced it, and you've you've I can tell you've gone all in, and part of that is supporting others. and And I do want to talk about this book before we get into kind of sure. the meat of this conversation. But more joy, uh, and the way that this book is set up, it's extremely unique, and and I like it. I'm I'm on week three. If that gives you a hint as to how the book is That's set the up, tabs you have because I'm really I. I I'm getting into it and I'm following you. And what's unique about this book is it has these practical, applicable um, approaches to joy. And I'm finding just, I'm just three weeks into this book that it really has given me some kind of some guidance, mm -hmm. some exercises to do to really embrace joy. And as you call it, it's a choice. Right. And so Joy, tell us a little bit more about where this book came from and, and kind of what inspired you to to write it? So we all have the same amount of joy within us. It's a matter of use it, using it, finding it, creating it. Um, but what made me write this book in particular was I was born pretty much a very happy-go-lucky kid. According to my sister, I was like the golden child, you know, the one that was always positive. And, and so I had a pretty decent life, but I got later in life into a very deep, dark depression. And I did not look the way I do right now. I was crying all the time. I had tears in my throat, my eyes. I was just a basket case. Spent most of my time in bed, um, no energy whatsoever, just a bad spot. Was going through some marital problems, a dog dying, some work stuff. It was, like, it was the perfect storm. Anywho, so one night after being in bed for a very long time, it seemed, um, God just kind of, I felt, it felt like a slap. And I like woke up and he only speaks to me in the middle of the night between like two and four because I figured out I have ADD, like undiagnosed, like, but 
definitely there and I have so many tabs open that he can't get my attention as much during the day. So he speaks to me at night because I'm like quiet. So that's when I hear from him. So whenever I'm awake at that time, I know there's something going on. And he said, I did not design you for this. I want you to get up and seek joy. And it was pretty loud and clear. Um, but I still, even though it was loud and clear, I was like, what, was it really him? Whatever. So it took me a couple of days, whatever, to figure it out. And then I was like, got one toe out of bed and one leg and one, and so forth. And then I started seeking joy in every way possible. And what that's what inspired the book because everything that I did to get myself out of it is, was helping me. Um, so I was like, at the end, I was, my circumstances hadn't even changed. That's the other thing. So you don't have to worry about your external circumstances. It all can happen right within you, um, which is beautiful because you can't rely on someone else and you can't rely on other outside circumstances to change in, in life. It just may or may not happen, right? So it gives you the control to still have joy. And, um, and since it helped me, I was like, I'm writing a book. That's how it happened. I love it. And I thank you for writing that book and sharing it with us all. I'm going to wow. put the link to access this book um, on Cindy's website, cindycone.com. She's also got a journal planner that uh, accompanies this. So make sure you check that out as well. But like I said, I'm three weeks into this thing and it is impactful. So I can't wait to get through the rest of it for the through this book. You did a thank great you. job, Cindy. So thank you. kudos I on that one. You. Thank you. <laughs> So Cindy, I love to connect with inspiring leaders like you and peek behind the curtain and figure out, hey, what is inspiring these inspiring leaders, right? And so I, I reached out to you and I asked you, I was like, hey, what inspires you, Cindy? You sent back three great points. And the first one you kind of alluded to a little bit is you're inspired to spread joy to the masses. So tell us what that means to you. Unpack, how do you spread joy to the masses and why does that inspire you? Well, it's so easy, honestly, to do, to spread joy. Like we kind of talked about briefly earlier, yet not everybody understands it or embraces it yet, but it's going to be scientifically. It's already in the works proven that joy is real um, and it will change your blood pressure, your cortisol. It will change. You can have longer life, better social relationships, mental health overall well-being i mean it goes on and on it's important right um, plus it just gives you more fun in life when you're more joy it's a ripple effect it makes it contagious like you're being more joyful today probably than normal because of me because <laughs> i'm contagious <laughs> in all the best ways not covid <laughs> but um so i just really believe that our time and this is this is well before my book i've lived my entire life believing that each day was a gift. I don't know where I got it from. I don't know how, like I never was in a situation where I was like on the brink of death or anything. I have just always appreciated every single day of my life. And I've lived like it's the last day, sometimes to a default if you ask my husband, because <laughs> I just love to embrace the day and have fun and joy. And I'm gonna teach other people not to take themselves so serious. Life doesn't have to be so serious. Like when we really try to uh, block out the noise of the world and we just go inside of ourselves, we have everything and more than you need for more joy inside yourself. Like you don't need anything else. Oh my gosh, that is so good. And there's so many things that you really, I, and I like how you understand and you've embraced that joy comes from the inside. It's not dependent on external factors. It's not like, oh, if this happens, then I will have. When or I get if, a job, when my yeah. life changes, when the kids yeah. go to college. Yeah. No, it's, it starts with you. It's it's yeah. a decision you make and you write about that in the book. And one of the things I learned from learned from you from this book is joy can be as simple as just smiling to yourself in the mirror and then going out and sharing that smile with somebody else. I'm doing the, I'm on uh, week three and it's like, um, share your smile with uh, 10 different people. And I'm like, that's like an intentional approach. And I just love that you're teaching us some practical things. It's not difficult. It's not, you know, no, out of, out of questions. Right. Yeah. It's people not, don't do them. That's the thing. Even in my own family, when the book came out and I would be like telling them about certain things in the book, I'm like, but you do that, right? So that, and they're like, no, like I took it for granted that, yeah, I mean, that's normal to smile at people. That's normal to pay uh -huh. for some coffee. That's normal to pull someone else's garbage can in. Like 
paying it forward and doing the little things in life to me has always been normal. So, yeah. So well, your normal <laughs> is not normal, and that's amazing. And I absolutely right. love that, Cindy. So the th second thing that you sh you shared, Cindy, which I think is extremely powerful, is you talk about your life experiences, both good and bad. These things inspire you. Yeah. And a lot of people would probably just say, hey, only the good things inspire me. The bad things, you know, bring me down. But here you are, you're collecting it all and oh, saying, hey. Yeah. And I this love the, the bad, actually. The bad is actually the good. Because if you look at it that way, you know that God's plan is always going to be good. He's always going to be faithful, right? During those down valleys, there's a reason for it. And you're getting changed, pruned, prepared for the next season that's going to catapult you so high up. But you have to go through that little down valley and how long ever it takes. Could be long, could be short, doesn't matter. The point is you praise him in that valley. You say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Until, and you, I promise you, um, that's how I've always looked at it. So even oh. the bad is great. <laughs> yeah. And I, and, I, and I agree with you. And I love how you talked about in the, even in the valleys, you, you, you thank, thank him because there in the valley is where you start developing your, uh, your, your endurance right? and your yes. lessons and yes. your appreciation. Because if yes. you just live on the, the, the mountaintops, you don't appreciate it. You don't. You and if don't. you've experienced the valley, you love those mountaintops even more. <laughs> and also what I've learned speaking of mountaintops is that a long time ago, I used to, you know, there was a prescribed thing in my family. You know, you go to college, you get your master's degree, you get married, you have two kids. Da, da, da. Like it was like you were on fast forward. You didn't have to make any decisions for yourself. That was the way it was. So every time I got to these mountaintops, I'd be like so anticlimactic. Like it didn't mm -hmm. even mean anything to me. Now I've realized I don't really care about the mountaintop because I'm enjoying the journey and all Ooh. that's the fun. The fun is in all those twists and turns and ups and downs, like getting to the top is okay. Get there. If I get there, I get there. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that, that you're, you're truly embracing it. You're enjoying, you're getting joy out of yes. twists and turns. And that's a lot of people were like, they're in, in, and I see, we were talking earlier about mindsets. And I see you, you, you made a comment earlier uh, about uh, have to versus get to. Yes. And, and, I, and I can see how you would apply the, I get to go through the valley. I get to yes. go through these t twists and turns Absolutely. to learn, to, to get something out of this. So that when I get to the mountaintop, it's like, I, this is amazing. Exactly. And you're appreciating all the little steps along the way. You're yeah. present in the moment. When you're present in the moment, that's where the joy is. Oh, that's good. Present in the moment, that's where you find the joy. Yeah, because if you're always looking ahead, first of all, you're never going to reach it. Like it's so far, it's like you're always, you're never, it's never good enough. And so, like that, who wants to live like that? Just you, you have to enjoy the present moment because that's all you have, first yeah. of all right we don't know what the future holds so you might as well just enjoy that present moment um oh and she, yeah i love that enjoy the present moment because that's where the joy is that is so good i think a lot of us miss that because like you said we're looking for the future and we don't we miss this joyful package yes. right here in front of us yes so good and like you talked about earlier gratitude um i know you have a big part of that in your book and gratitude is really one of the roots the main root of joy they really go oh. so hand in hand you have to be grateful for those little things because those little things are the humongous things i mean they are so big like here's an example i just uh, i have this out because I, sh I have a community and i just showed them this example so this is happened to be on my desk so um last fall i was walking to the mailbox nothing good bad or indifferent was going on in my life i don't even remember what was, i just remember it was just a normal blah 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 day okay but i found this leaf on the way to my mailbox and it has a heart in the middle and i stopped and picked it up and i can't tell you now we're going on a year the amount of joy that this continues to still bring me like this leaf is so beautiful and i love the heart and i love it reminds me of the moment of just I enjoying the moment, the walk to the mailbox to pick it up, finding this beautiful leaf, and now I'm using it to show other people. It's like something's it's free. It's a leaf. <laughs> but you know what? 
Because you have joy, joy brings you awareness and awareness brings you the opportunities to have gratitude for a leaf. Exactly. That otherwise you would never have found. I love that you you own that and you're like, this leaf that most <laughs> of us would take for granted and or discard, yeah. you had awareness that it was there and that present in the moment and you yeah. found joy in that moment. You're living it. I, I am. I'm living it up. <laughs> and that, I really believe that. It's like, I it, I don't want my life to end tomorrow, but you know, I feel like I am doing, living my best life every single day. So if, and, yeah. and it's, and it's encouraging others and inspiring others because you are, and that, that encourages other people. And I'm so glad I connected with you. I know this is so fun. <laughs> Cindy, I've got, I have, you, I have one more inspiration point from you, which okay. I, I really like um, a lot is that you're inspired by nature. Yeah. I mean, that's how, I just how that leaf. Yeah. like a leaf, you just kind of yeah. segued right into this yeah. next one. So <laughs> tell us. What is, how does nature inspire you? Okay, so there was a period of time when um, I was unemployed. I think my husband was too. It was one of these really bad moments in time, not a moment, it lasted long. Um, and I would take a walk around the block, um, you know, as something to do. It was like my work, you know, you have to, when you're unemployed, you have to come up with things to keep yourself occupied. And so I would pass, it was winter. And I was past the same huge, gorgeous tree, but it was bare. And I still find trees that are bare, gorgeous. I like, I like them full. I like them half full. I like all these different arrangements. Anyway, um, and I kept saying, when this tree has leaves, I'll have a new chapter. I kept every time I walked around, it was like the thing I said to myself every time. I would look at that tree and I would be like. And this is just going to be a chapter, just like the leaves are going to come back up. I'm going to have a job again. Life's going to be normal again, whatever. And I was like, it's just a season. And like, that's just one example of how powerful trees really can remind you that look, and they come back stronger, right? They come back bigger and beautiful and, you know, birds singing on them. It's just, it's just, just an example. But when I go on hikes, I live in the Smoky Mountains. Um, I love... I'll see like a tree with like a branch, like kind of hanging off and it looks like it should just fall off. Like it's not really attractive to that tree. And like, I looked at that and I was like, it's really shows how you have to let things go. Like, you know, I find messages in the trees all the time. Like that leaf just needs to go. That branch needs to fall off because sometimes like that is, it's not serving that tree anymore. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. like there's uh. people in their lives or situations that don't serve us anymore um let it go i am not an <laughs> opera singer but i like to have fun <laughs> i love it i love it and i like i like sydney how you're recognizing that um a, a tree just becomes a reminder for you that all things have we call it chapters but for trees it's a yeah. season yeah. and recognize that things go through changes and it's okay it's okay to drop your leaves or it's okay to drop you know prune yes. your vine if you will yes. so that you can have additional growth because if you don't prune yourself then you can't grow absolutely you get stagnant, you get stuck. that's worse that's way yeah. worse not oh great gosh I, <laughs> cindy i could i literally could talk to you for hours this is just <laughs> So Good. We'll do fun. another show. We will have to do it on my podcast, so we can continue this conversation. <laughs> I I love this so much. But Cindy, we're we're getting close to the end of our time, but I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought before we wrap up. Oh, closing thought. Okay, so I'm going to share that the most important thing you can do today is make sure that you are surrounding yourself with people that are positive supportive uplifting who want to see you win who celebrate you all of that um and if you're not then get another circle of friends because it really matters your community who you are around will take will propel you up or down it honestly will um so that's my closing tip for the day I love it. And I agree with it 1000%. Your alignments, the people you surround yourself, that's your circle, that'll make or break you. 
it that, will. Yeah, you become like the average. Kids, right? It's like it's almost the same thing. Like when we, we have kids, and you want them to hang around with the certain people that are not the ones that are going to detention every day. You know, you don't want the bad behavior to rub off on them. Yeah. It's the same thing. If you don't have people in your life that are going where you're going and uplifting you and pushing uh -huh. you, you're not going to grow. Yeah. There you go. And sometimes you got to prune your friends, the wrong ones, so that you can <laughs> find the right ones. So good. So guys, grab this book from Cindy Cohn. I'm going to add the link to this book. I'm going to add a link to her website as well. So you can also grab the journal planner that accompanies this right now. I'm telling you, I'm three weeks in and I am absolutely loving this book so very much. So make sure you grab a copy as well. Make sure you connect with Cindy on LinkedIn. That's Check out her website, Money Back Guarantee. She is amazing. <laughs> That's heard true. Me. Heard Money from me. <laughs> Cindy, thank you so much. All for right. joining it was me a pleasure. I enjoyed oh it. Thank you thank so much. I look forward to more sessions. We are. We're going to have to connect again. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, we will see you on the next episode. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye.